So it's finally here, the product we've all been waiting for and the review that we promised back when we did our unboxing. You can find that just up there. The chance to play our favorite PC games on the go. Now, of course, portable gaming isn't new and with Nintendo pretty much dominating the space for at least, I don't know, a century now and smartphone gaming becoming a huge market of late, the PC gamers were being left behind. But not anymore. The Steam Deck is here and it works pretty well, if I do say so myself albeit for a few hiccups and bugs along the way, but we've been told that they're going to be sorted out. It's an ongoing project. Now at this point, I just want to give a massive shout out to Valve, the creators of the Steam Deck and Steam, the PC gaming provider, who very graciously provided us with a review unit to take a look at. So there will be links in the description below to go and check out Valve and Steam for yourself. The Steam Deck isn't small. Now sure, it's portable, it's lightweight, and can feel pretty comfortable when playing games, but it's not going in a pocket and it's taking up a chunk of backpack space. Now it measures at around 31 centimeters in width and around 12 centimeters in height, and the depth can range depending on where you measure. Its handles are thicker, of course, than the sensor, so you can get a good comfortable ergonomic grip on the handles. The whole thing is covered in matte grippy plastic again for that grip but i suspect it's probably to keep the cost down as well though anything more than what it's already offering i don't think is really even needed the control inputs mimic that of a typical games console controller you've got two analog sticks a d-pad on the top left that's reachable with your left thumb your a b x y buttons start and select either side of the screen four trigger buttons and four extra buttons on the back too on top you can find your power and volume controls and some interesting inputs around the front are the two touch sensitive pads akin to a laptop mouse pad on a laptop. These don't really come into play while playing traditional games on the Steam Deck, but they do come in handy when you're in desktop mode, but more on that in another video. And as we're solely concentrating on the Steam Deck with this one. Under the pads, you've also got your Steam button, which takes you essentially to a main menu and allows you to access various areas of the Steam Deck, like your games, your library, game settings, media files, and also the main settings of the deck itself. The right is a quick menu access, and here is where you'll spend some time fine tuning your Steam Deck. You can find things like your brightness, audio mixes for sound and voice, your friends list, notifications, and a few more uh, in terms of performance. There are two speakers on the bottom, which offer some decent sound while inside of games. Now they won't replace a decent headset or even headphones, but will do the job if you're in the back of a car on a journey or chilling out on the couch playing some games. In terms of inputs, you've not got many at all. There's one USB-C input for charging the device or for external peripherals like a display or a keyboard and a mouse or one of those uh, USB-C dongle things with all of the inputs on there and a 3.5 millimeter headphone input. The Steam Deck's major highlight is its screen. There's no denying that. And at first glance, it's just simply glorious. Now when you first turn it on it was almost shocking to see that everything was really super tack sharp and SteamOS was very readable. Now the screen itself is 7 inches from corner to corner and the resolution sits at 1280 by 800 with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It uses IPS LCD technology which gives colors a much nicer vividness to them and has a max brightness of 400 nits. Its refresh rate sits at 60 hertz too so not the smoothest that PC gamers are used to by now but it's absolutely possible for a small handheld like this and I go into a bit more detail on this in a moment with my gaming experience. It's touch enable too, which helps with desktop mode and when you're selecting specific items inside of games, though you can actually get away with not using the touch screen functionality at all. There's a cleaning cloth included to remove fingerprints, as yes, the screen is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, so that's another reason not to use it. And there's also an ambient light sensor included, which brightens and dims the screen depending on the ambient light hitting the Steam Deck itself. Now, I wasn't hugely keen on this feature. I do like my screen to be as bright as possible, even if I'm sitting in darkness, but it will save a bit of battery life if your screen is dimmed. Everything here runs on something called Steam OS and it's version 3.0, though it is a Linux based system known as an Arc Linux. And it has a layer on top of that called Proton. Now, without getting into all of the technical info, Proton enables compatibility between Steam games and the Linux operating system without the need for a developer to actually build a Linux version of their game. It's essentially a portable PC with a Steam branded and made operating system laid over the top. 
And yes, you can access the Linux desktop pretty easily. I will be running through all of the different things you can do in future videos. But for now, we're just focusing on the Steam experience as after all, this is a Steam Deck. So booting up the Steam Deck takes seconds. It's really, really quick and it loads directly into the home screen. Here you will find your most recently played games in case you want to jump back into them quickly, a what's new section that houses news, updates to games and so on like patch notes and things like that, a friends list so you can see what your friends are currently playing and finally a recommended section which looks at your current Steam library and recommends you new titles based on its findings. Now it's all very simple and very self-explanatory. Oh and you can make calls and chat with your friends from your friends list by typing on the screen or using the d-pad. Now I was also told that the microphone quality was also pretty decent too and I had no issues at all with the quality I was receiving either from someone I was talking over Steam. Just take a listen. Can you hear me? Yeah I can hear you now yeah. How's it going? You alright? Yeah I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah not bad. You on your PC or your Steam Deck? Steam Deck. I'm uh you're, you're you've uh, become part of the review now. <laughs> To test Hello the microphone there. quality. <laughs> Hello, internet. How are we are there? <laughs> what do I sound like? Uh, yeah, you, you know what? You sound quite clear. Um, I'm actually impressed with the quality. You definitely sound uh, like you're on a mid-tier mic. Really? Yeah, it's quite impressive. Wow, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. The meat and bones of SteamOS can be found by tapping the Steam button on the bottom right. This opens up a side menu that gives you access to your entire library. The Steam Store if you want to buy new games, your friends list again, and chat features, media for those in-game screenshots that you might take, access to your downloads, and the actual Steam Deck settings themselves. The power option at the bottom will give you the option to turn the thing off, put it into sleep, or shut down the Steam OS to access the Linux desktop. Jumping into the Steam Store, chances are you're going to be sticking to the Great On Deck tab. Now this highlights all of the verified games in one big list, which is a big win for me as some non-verified games may not work, and some are just not compatible at all with the Steam Deck. Thumbnails do take a bit of time to load in, but it doesn't really ruin the experience for me. This also follows onto your game library, as you've probably got more games in your libraries coming from PC that is compatible with the Steam Deck. Well, the good news is that SteamOS categorizes those games too into their own great on deck category. The way the Steam Deck allocates its games to different categories is pretty great. The first category is for verified games, meaning these games have been tested for compatibility issues and are playable from the word go. There's also playable, which are for games that may require some kind of settings, tweaks uh, to get working. Unsupported for games that are just, well, <laughs> unsupported, like VR titles, for example. And finally, unknown, which basically means Valve haven't tested for. For the majority of this review, I did stick to the verified list, as this is really going to be the list of games that I would say 80% of users are going to be playing on the Steam Deck anyway, unless you're gonna be launching the Epic Store, Origin, or Xbox Games Pass. And to be perfectly honest with you, the selection of games isn't something to really be sniffed at at all. When you come to install your game that hasn't been verified, you will see a prompt before installing it, as I saw for Dying Light 2. You can choose to ignore this if you want to and install the game anyway, but that's on you. Now, installing games was a bit of a mixed bag and wasn't really the best experience for me. It took absolutely forever to allocate space to larger games. Now, installing things like Deep Rock Galactic, Cuphead, or Sonic Mania as examples were no problem at all. They're tiny games, right? Like three gigabytes or less but god of war more like god of snore by the time i was done as i pretty much fell asleep waiting for it to allocate hard drive space now i'm joking of course i just sat and waited and waited and waited and finally my download started i was getting around 53.2 megabyte per second peak which i've got no problem with that is pretty good however issues continued oh that's wireless by the way through a wireless 5 gigahertz connection However, issues continued with the installation of the game and the Steam Deck was quoting that God of War was going to take an hour and 30 minutes to install. Now that figure spiked at one point to one hour and 50 minutes, but then dropped and all of a sudden it jumped to completion. So I don't know what happened there. But booting up God of War and it was just so smooth, though I was only getting an average of around 30 to 32 frames per second. 
But this, I suppose, is to be expected from a handheld trying to play a AAA title. It's, it, it was still, however, an amazing experience to sit here and play something as meaty as God of War on a handheld device. Now, of course, the fan was going just absolutely mental, keeping the parts inside nice and cool, and there was quite a bit of heat being expelled from the top of the device. Now, temperatures were hitting around 67 degrees on the GPU and 70 degrees on the CPU. The cooling fans, though loud, did do a great job of keeping the device as cool as possible. Now, to get around the fan noise, no, just stick in a pair of headphones and you won't notice the squeal. So I'm just sitting here editing the Steam Deck review, just filming the last bits of B-roll. I'm playing God of War. And I just wanted to show you. You can probably hear the God of War game sounds as well. But I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the noise of the actual fan that's expelling hot air from the top. Of course, though, this is a game that is running at the Steam Deck's native resolution of 1280 by 800, and I didn't push it too far in terms of graphical presets either. Introducing God of War's higher preset was enough to cause some notable frame drops and stuttering, so I did lower it back down to its original preset, though the resolution I kept the same. I did notice a bit of stutter as well when playing some Deep Rock Galactic, where the hub world was a little stuttery, you know, the spaceship before you go and launch into a mission. Now, by no means was it unplayable, but it just felt like frames were being slightly dropped here and there. Once I was inside a mission though, it was fine. There were no issues at all for me. Now, where I think the Steam Deck does truly shine though, is playing those more indie arcade or more casual type narrative led titles. Now think Stardew Valley, Gree, Firewatch, Hellblade, the new far game about the little boat, a uh, submarine thing that's just come out, something like that. Or even Hellblade, which again, I've got very much back into, which to let you know, the audio pans of the whispers sound absolutely great. You know, it says best experienced on headphones while the whispers coming out of the two front speakers were just absolutely wicked. Or even to some degree, something like Cuphead, as long as you've got the eyesight to spot the smaller enemies flying at you. Those kind of pick up and play titles that you could just relax on the sofa or while you're in bed. Okay, maybe not Cuphead, that game is just as frustrating as hell. And just play a simple narrative experience. Or maybe even something that doesn't require a lot of reading or trying to shoot or hit small targets on the screen because for me anyway, it did give me a bit of eye fatigue. I know my eyesight isn't the best, but this was very hard at times, especially with things like prompts for God of War or Elden Ring where I was learning what the buttons do. You know, press A to jump or something. Speaking of Elden Ring though, that game was still just as infuriating on the Steam Deck as it is on my main PC. Now, yeah, okay, I die a lot. Sorry, I can't just get good. What can I say? But still, it's an amazing to have a game like this as a portable experience. I did have to adjust my settings as the game remembered my PC settings and it was forcing a 1440p resolution on the deck. So I had to turn that down to a native 1280 by 800 resolution and I set my quality preset to medium and I was easily hitting again a smooth 32 FPS consistently and it did feel really smooth, I must admit. Moving on to some racing, I played some F1 2022, and when installing the game, SteamOS gave me a prompt saying that it had some graphical compatibility issues, though Steam has marked it as a playable game. Now, in reality, it played great. I had no issues with getting into a race or into the menus, and there was no real stuttering either. Again, the graphical performance isn't set to the highest to hit those consistent frames. My game again defaulted back to the native resolution, 1280 by 800, but the, the, uh, but the actual game set the graphics preset quality to ultra low. Now, I still managed to get a smooth experience this way, and to be perfectly honest, the screen is so small anyway, details that could have appeared on higher graphics preset levels probably wouldn't be seen on this screen anyway, so for me, it really made no difference. It's surprising at how good an experience this thing is with playing games, seeing as it is running off an APU. Now, sure, it's Ryzen Zen 2 architecture, and that's great in itself, but to get the smoothness and the detail at times, that processor is working hard.
and it produces a really, really great experience. If you wanted a little bit more information on what's happening behind the scenes with your games, there is an overlay for those wanting a little more information. Just hit the quick menu button, head to performance and turn on the performance overlay. Now it's really there for those tinkerers who want to get the most out of their hardware, looking at you PC gamers, I don't blame you really, but uh, is it going to be interesting to all users? No, it's not, but it's a nice touch as well if you're sitting there trying to diagnose a problem with the Steam Deck or a particular game. For me, one of the Steam Deck's biggest downfalls is battery life. Now you can get around two hours out of this thing before you're going to have to reach for the charger. It isn't exactly ideal if you're expecting to take it on a long haul flight or on holiday or a camping trip where you'll be quite limited on power, I'm sure, or even a long car ride. Sure, there is USB-C charging, but I found in my own experience that USB-C charging isn't powerful enough to keep the Steam Deck powered and charging at the same time. It slows down the power drain to extend your battery life while playing, and that's me charging it through my PC directly, my mobile phone charger, and a flurry of USB plugs I had laying around the house. Now, this could also be down to the version I have here. As I said at the start, Valve was kind enough to send us one to test and it came directly from the USA so I had a USA plug. Whether the voltage or amps or whatever linked to electricity played a major role I'm not too sure but when I used the official plug with the with a UK adapter the Steam Deck was able to stay powered for a lot longer also while I was using it as well. The Steam Deck is an amazing piece of hardware. Being able to play your PC games on the go is literally just superb. There are some limitations, especially when it comes to running other games from other launches that require you to hit the Linux desktop. We've been doing a bit of testing on this, but that's for another time and another video. As a portable device to play your Steam games, it is almost flawless. Now, game selection is great. The software overlay is great, or the Steam OS, sorry, I should call it, is awesome. Functionality is awesome, but the battery life is a major concern, and it's going to get very annoying having to reach for a charger so often, or getting caught short on that long haul flight. Steam Deck 2, please aim for a better battery. It's, it's a must. But in all honesty, if you're like me, who works from home, has a pretty beefy gaming PC on the desk, are you going to need a Steam Deck? Probably not. But if you're regularly commuting on a train or as a car passenger or want something to chill out with while lounging on the sofa or in bed before sleeping, then yes, the Steam Deck is an amazing product. But it also comes with all of the added features that Linux offers too. So that is a huge win as well. So that was a bit of a long one, but thank you very much for checking out our video review of the Steam Deck. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. Also, let us know in the comments down below if you've picked up a Steam Deck, what your favorite games are, what you're using it for. If you've dived into the Linux desktop stuff, let us know your experiences on that as well. You'll also be able to find links in the description to the Steam Store to get some games and also uh, Valve to buy a Steam Deck. Well, actually, I think it's on the Steam Store as well, so you'll get the Steam Store link down there that so you can go and buy your own steam deck as i say thanks very much for watching thanks valve for making this video possible for us and we will see you very soon